I'm Amanda. As you know, trades are a critical part of GameStop's circle of life because they encourage customers to return more often and make it easier for them to buy. And now, more than ever, our customers are looking for ways to stretch their entertainment dollars. Trades are also a great way to grow your business and increase profits. In the time we spend together today, we'll be looking at a couple of things. Building your trade business, helping you feel more comfortable talking about trades, and trade execution all of the steps you take as you follow a trade transaction from start to finish. We'll look at some best practices to help you provide that exceptional experience, keeping your customers coming back to trade with you again and again. Now here's some information that will blow you away. Our recent research shows that a large percentage of our customers don't even know about our trade program. And even some of our customers who do, don't fully understand how it helps them. So you can see the impact just mentioning trades can make. It will spark more questions and that opens the opportunity for you to educate them about the value of our trade program. Now talking about trades is important, but it is equally as important that your explanation be tailored in a way that brings value to that particular customer. It's natural that the conversation about the value of trades be different with a core gamer than with a mother and her children. One of the reasons GameStop is so successful is you. It's the passion you have for gaming that brings it to life for our customers. Another reason is the unique currency we offer through trades. Your store will be most successful when these forces come together your passion, and GameStop's trade message. There are many ways you can impact your trade business, so let's take a look at a few. Over the phone is an ideal way to begin educating your customers about trades before they arrive in your store. Thanks for calling GameStop, where we're buying so these games. This is Steven, I'm going to help you. Hey, how much can I get for Super Mario Galaxy? Well, Super Mario Galaxy, that's actually going to depend. Are you bringing any trades in with you today? Because any trades that you bring in is going to lower the cost of anything that you purchase today. Oh, so how does that work? Well, first... Well, uh, what about Legend of Zelda for the Wii? How much can I get for that? Legend of Zelda, correct? Let's see. Uh, Legend of Zelda shows $16 trade-in credit if it is in working condition. So what I'm going to recommend is that you bring in all the games that you don't play anymore. We can add up the trade-in credit and give you even more off the cost of anything new or used in the store. You can get 10% more on your trades too with our Edge card, which comes free with the Game Informer magazine subscription. Also, we're running a trade special right now. So if you trade in five or more games, you get another 30% extra on top of the 10% you get with your Edge card. You've just seen one of the many ways you can discuss trades and add value when talking with customers on the phone. Now, customers' needs vary, so your approach may be different. You want to make sure the conversation is casual so it doesn't feel like a sales pitch to the customer. Because what you are doing with every trade conversation is making it easier for customers to buy and helping them stretch their dollars. Another great opportunity for discussing trades is while you're on the sales floor. Like over the phone, just mentioning trades will be enough to spark questions and a conversation. And if that customer is already aware of our trade program, it's a gentle reminder of the value it can bring to them. The one advantage to buying used games is that you get 10% off with your Edge card and you have a 7 day exchange policy. If you just don't like it, you can bring it back in and get something else. As you build up your used games, you actually um, have the opportunity to bring those in and trade them into us. Um, over time, you bring the games in and you actually get in-store credit for them. That you can apply towards great new releases that are coming out or towards uh, items that are in the store, new or used. Now let's move to the cash wrap. Remember, every sale is a possible future trade, so mentioning trades here can leave that last impression on the customer before they leave your store. As you take a look at this next example, notice how the Game Advisor ties in the newly purchased Edge card with the customer's future trades, reminding the customer to bring them back in when they're done playing.
All right, and since you've given me your email address, you'll start getting those weekly specials that I was telling you about. Great. Right, inside the bag here, I put our store card, so that way if you have any questions, you can call me and I can walk you through the setup okay. or anything like that. There is that. And let me give you this. Don't forget, with all those games, once you're done playing them, you can bring them back in to trade in for store credit, put it down towards something that hasn't come out yet, or pick up one of our used games. And with that edge card that you just got, you'll get 10% off on your used ones. Excellent. Okay. Do you need help carrying that out or anything? Nope. Thanks for all your help, man. All right. You have a good day, Appreciate sir. Enjoy it. it. Thank you. Having trade conversations with your customers is a great way to continue to build your business. Remember, trades are a very important component in GameStop's circle of life and play a key role in bringing your customers the best experience and the best value. Okay, so we've talked about some ideas for building your trade business, how to start conversations and educate your customers on trades, but let's take a look at another important aspect of building your trade business, execution. Competitors have tried to copy our trade business, but no one can execute it like GameStop, no one. Just like the exceptional customer experiences we provide, trades is one component of our business that gives us a big edge over the competition, and that is very important in today's extremely competitive retail environment. We're going to look at some tips to make it as fast and easy to trade as possible. This will also include best practices for providing trade details, answering questions, and discussing any concerns your customers may have along the way, creating the ultimate customer experience for anyone who comes into trade in your store. First, we're going to look at some opportunities you have to build loyalty as you address sometimes challenging situations. Let's take a look at a couple of examples of how to, or not to, explain trade values to your customer. Hey, how's it going? Hi. Do you have some trades for us today? Yeah, I just wanted to see how much I could get for these. Okay, well, let's go take a look and see what we can get you. Do you have an edge card? Uh, no. Okay. Well, this one's 10. And this one's 4. This one is 25. And this one is $1. $1? Wow, well, I paid 60 bucks for this one for my son. I'm sorry, that's just what the computer says, but we do have a special going on. A special? Can this special get me more than a dollar for a $60 game? Okay, so let's look at another approach. Do you have an edge card? Uh, no. An edge card would really help you out today. It gets you an additional 10% on all of your trades. Let's see what we can get you. All right, with a special we're running today, and if you decide to get the edge card, your total will come out to $37.81. Now the good thing about the Edge Card is that it comes free with a one-year subscription to Game Informer Magazine, which is usually $14.99. It has all the new games, reviews, hints, and tips. Now with your trade-ins and the special we're running today, it'll only take $2.19 off of your total trading credit of $40. Plus you'll get 10% off all of your future trades and 10% off of all used games and accessories for the next year. Okay, you know, I think you'd really like this Game Informer. I could take this credit and put it down on the new Guitar Hero, right? That's what he really wanted. Sure. Let's see what we can get you started on. So you can see that in cases of multiple trades, you'll always want to give them the total trade value versus the value of each individual game. That customer was happy with the trade credit overall, but may not have wanted to trade if she knew that those two games were worth only $4 and $1. And, very important, you will always want to add in any of our current specials and the extra 10% they'll get with the edge card before giving them the total. This is how you can bring additional value for that customer and build loyalty. In cases where your customer is still unhappy about the credit they're offered, you'll want to focus their attention on our specials and the additional 10% they get with the edge card. Point out that we have some great used titles for every platform that are inexpensive and bring them more value for their credit dollars. You may also want to mention that the sooner they trade in their games, typically, the higher the value.
Now let's talk about another challenging situation, charging refurb fees. Customers can be sensitive to being charged a fee when they trade, so let's look at some general guidelines for when to charge a refurb fee. Some of the things that I look for when I charge a refurb fee is if the game has multiple scratches in one area, if the scratches go from the inside ring to the outside ring, if there are circular scratches, or if there's something on the disc that I can't quite get clean here in my store. As for systems, if the factory seal is missing or if it's not in working condition. In these situations, I would definitely charge a refurb fee. On the other hand, if the game has only minor scratches, is missing a case, or there's something on it that can be easily removed, there's no need to charge a fee. Remember, your responsibility to protect your store's assets should be carefully balanced with building customer loyalty. Well, these two have pretty significant scratches on them, so we have to charge a $2 refer free. But since you traded all these games in, you qualify for your 30% power trade. Not only that, you brought in your edge card, which gave you an extra 10%. Uh, so the total comes out to uh, 7664. Would you want to put something on a future game as a res to reserve it, or do you want to take a look around for something else? Well, uh, yeah, I was just going to see how much I got and then uh, take a look around and see what you guys have. Sure, well, why don't we take a look? All right. You see, just like the first scenario you watched, providing the customer with the overall trade value, even after mentioning the refurb fees, helps to move the conversation along so that you can begin focusing on what that customer wants to do with their credit. Now let's look at an even more challenging situation, refusing a trade. Here's your receipt, and you have a great day. Thank you. Hi, I see you have some trade-ins there. Yeah, I just want to see how much I can get for these. Well, you have two copies of this, and we don't accept multiple copies. Let's look at another example that shows how important how you say something is when trying to build customer loyalty. Hi, I see you have some trade-ins there. Yeah, I just wanted to see how much I can get for these. Well, it looks like you have uh, two copies of these, and unfortunately we can't accept multiple copies, so I will give you that one back. Okay. And let's see what we can get for you here. Well, we are currently running a trade-in special, so was there anything that you were looking to reserve specifically? Well, actually, I was thinking about getting a shooter game for my boyfriend. He likes shooter games, and I don't know anything about shooter games. It always helps to think carefully about how you'll say something. Practice what you say. Talk with your manager and coworkers to get ideas for handling those situations that could be a little more difficult. Okay, so we've talked about some potentially sensitive conversations you may encounter with your customers. Now let's talk about efficiencies in processing trades. We're going to go through, step by step, and look at some best practices you can use to help make the process go faster, freeing up more time for you, and providing a better experience for your customers, those who are trading and those who aren't. Notice as the game advisor accepts the trades and inspects them, he sorts them by system before they are entered into the POS. There may be cases when you have two people available. One can inspect and sort the games as the other is processing the trade. Also, high volume stores with three or more registers can designate one register as a trade register. It's always good to have trades gutted, on the wall, and available for sale right away. But I'm sure you know that isn't always possible since your customer is number one over any task. But now, even if you don't have time to fully process all trades that day, you should attempt to get hot titles processed and displayed as quickly as possible to minimize the potential loss of sales for these titles. The stickers print out in the order in which they were scanned. Now you'll put the stickers, with the games, in the spot designated in your store for trades. Some stores have a box under the cash wrap, some have a designated drawer. Others use space on the back counter. Let's move on to the next steps. Grab sleeves from the drawer. Count sleeves to match the number of games in the stack. With the game cases faced up, put the first price label on the top right-hand corner, the second one on the lower spine. Then the first ID label covers the manufacturer's label on the back 
and the second ID label goes on the sleeve as you insert the gutted gain. It's important to have the correct label on the sleeve. Then separate case and sleeve and move to the next gain. Now on the days you are not able to process trades right away, policy does require that they be complete and merchandised before the end of the night. This is especially important in high volume stores. After you've finished labeling all the games, alphabetize the cases and gutted games. Immediately file gutted games in the drawer, then take the alphabetized cases and merchandise them on the wall. We looked at some best practices for the mechanics of processing trades, but what about customers? What if you have multiple trades going on with multiple customers in line and the phone rings? I'm sure many of you have had days like that. So let's look at some ways to win the hearts and minds of your customers while tackling those hectic days. One of the first things to remember is most trade customers understand the transaction takes time and are willing to wait. But a sense of urgency goes a long way with your customers. If they see you hustle, they are far more patient and understanding. One best practice that is always a good idea is to simply acknowledge the other customers that are waiting. Smile, make direct eye contact, and let them know that it will be just a moment while you process these trades. Once they get to you, apologize for their wait and thank them for their patience. Hi folks, I'm going to process these trades real quick and I'll be with you in a minute. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Sorry about the wait. Thanks for your patience. How can I help you today? I'd like to pick these up. Sure. If you know your trade customer would like to take a look around and you don't want to hold up the line to process the trades, you can tell them that you'll just suspend the transaction while they shop. This gives the trade customer, who is not looking for anything specific, time to browse, and you, time to gain the loyalty of those additional customers waiting in line. What about phone calls? You have a trade customer, customers in line, and the phone rings. What do you do? Let's take a look at one option. Can you excuse me one second, please? Thank you for calling GameStop, where we buy and sell used games. This is Starshaw. Can I help you? Yeah, um, I have a few trades, and I'd like to see what I can get for them. I'm sorry, we're really busy in the store right now. Can I take your name and number and call you right back? Yeah, my name is Kelly, 565-112-1311. Um, Great. Again, my name is Tarsha, and I'll call you back in a few minutes. Thanks for your patience. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hi, my name is Amanda, and today we're going to look at some ways to effectively assess and hire power players, the types of store team members that will benefit you greatly as a store manager that will help to build your GameStop business and ensure your long-term success. Because your success as a store manager and GameStop success as a retailer starts with the people you hire to join your team, the team that is the face of GameStop, that will continue to help you drive sales and provide exceptional service to the much more diverse population of people that now play video games. Oftentimes, we use our gut instinct when selecting a candidate rather than actually digging into that person's skills, past experience, and success on previous jobs. Taking the steps to ensure that your team member skills align with your store's goals is essential for your success. While having a candidate that is knowledgeable about gaming and available when you need them is certainly something to consider in the hiring decision. It should not be the sole basis for choosing qualified candidates. There are many aspects to consider when selecting someone for your team. So it's important that you are aware of their past performance because it is a true indicator of future success. This training will give you the tools and information you will need for hiring power players. The types of power players who will be key in helping you and GameStop move ahead into the future of video gaming. Now let's talk about the type of questions you can ask to accurately assess your candidate's abilities. This is called behavioral-based interviewing. 
The type of questions you ask in a behavioral-based interview forces the applicant to give answers based on past actions or reality, not answers that attempt to predict what they might do. For example, a behavioral-based question would be, tell me how you've dealt with an unhappy customer, instead of, what would you do if you had an unhappy customer? Let's take a look at some examples of how to effectively conduct a behavioral-based interview. Thank you, Lisa, for taking the time to come in and interview for a job today here at GameStop. I am so excited to be here. Thanks for calling me in. I have been a gamer for years, and I've shopped at your store since I was a little kid. I am so psyched about the opportunity to actually work at GameStop. Well, that's awesome, because I'll tell you what, I'm, I know exactly how you feel. I've been a gamer for years, too, and I'm very, very excited about this opportunity to actually take the time to interview you. This company has grown so much in the past couple of years. This is a great opportunity and a great time to actually be a part of the company. But I've had the opportunity to actually review your, review your application here. Are there any questions whatsoever that I can answer for for you about the job at hand or the company? Can't think of any questions right now? Not right now. Okay, well what I want you to do is just take your time. If you do think of any questions between now and then, just let me know and I'll be glad to answer those for you, okay? As we go through the interview, I just